Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. In today's video, we're going to be turning a lot of planets into gas giants and discussing the possibility of it actually happening or existing a long time ago. Welcome to What The Math. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, first of all, Jupiter, the mighty gas giant that we have in our solar system, is the largest planet we have right now. But there's a slight chance that maybe, just maybe, a long time ago, billions of years ago, there were actually more gas giants orbiting our sun, and one day they actually disappeared and turned into something else. Well, let's not rush things. So let's actually go into the new simulation here. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn all of our four terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, into gas giants for fun, and then just see what happens. So what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do this is as follows. Let's actually slow down time a little bit, zoom into Mercury, and start increasing its mass quite dramatically. Not uh, just in terms of sizes of Moon, we're actually going to switch to sizes of Jupiter, and start adding huge amounts of mass to it. So this is already the largest planet we have in our solar system. And within the next few minutes, it's going to turn into a gas giant. So let's see how many Jupiters we actually have to increase this by to make this into a gas giant. Here we go. And there we go. 13 Jupiters. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe almost 14. So, at 13.8 Jupiters, Mercury turns into a beautiful gas giant with exactly the same composition as it had before. It basically consists of 6.3 Jupiters of iron and about 7.5 Jupiters of silicates. Well, that's really cool. Not very realistic, but very cool nevertheless. Let's go to the next planet. Let's do the same to Venus. We're going to increase its mass quite a lot and turn it into a gas giant as well by going in here, changing the parameters, and basically, well, I don't really know how many uh, masses of Jupiter I need to change Venus into a gas giant, but I'm guessing it's going to be around the same because its um, composition is very similar to Mercury. Maybe a little bit more silicates, a little bit less iron, so maybe it won't need as much. Or, here we go, 13.1. Almost exactly the same. Okay, next on the list is our own planet Earth. This will be very interesting to see because I always wanted to find out what would Earth look like if it was a gas giant. So you're about to find out. This is all obviously going to be randomly generated because this game always generates random gas giants for us. And uh, in this case, as I increase the mass of Earth, you'll see that it also increases in size and that's because it's currently still a terrestrial planet. But at some point, it will reach such high pressures and such how such high uh, size that um, the silicates will start acting like gases. And there we go, at 13 masses... Oh, no, maybe a little bit more. 13.3. 13.3 masses, it turns into a very beautiful Jupiter-like gas giant. And the last one is Mars, and I'm just going to take a wild guess and say that it's going to be around the same amount, maybe a little bit more, so let's just go in here and place, uh, put this at around 5 right away, 5 masses of Jupiter, and now increase it until it becomes a gas giant as well. And here we go. Very similar mass here, and 13.1, just like Earth. Alright, let's take a look at them in the chart here. There is beautiful Mercury beautiful Venus, also somewhat beautiful, but I guess, oh wait, no, that's Venus, this is Earth, Earth is uh, a lot more beautiful than Venus, and Venus is a lot more reflective than Earth, and lastly we have Mars, a little bit more red than everything else, and all of them are actually bigger than Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus combined, or at least more massive, in terms of size they're about the same. Okay, so that's cool, now why am I doing all of this? Well, we're going to run the simulation now, specifically looking at orbits, and uh, find out what is going to happen to our solar system. The reason I'm doing this is because there's actually at least one hypothesis that says that a long time ago, there were quite a lot of gas giants orbiting around our sun. As a matter of fact, everything was a gas giant. And something happened then, and, well, it turned into what we have now. Gas giants, ice giants, and terrestrial planets. 
One of the speculations is that most of the gas giants either got um, kicked out of our solar system through interaction with others and basically got shut out and disappeared, became rogue planets. And some of them very likely collided back into our sun, adding to the total mass of, you know, solar mass. But it's also possible, and this is yet another hypothesis, that many of them collided with each other, which is what I'm actually hoping will happen here. They're going to be interacting with one another, and I expect to see some collisions. I'm actually going to take a look at Earth because it has the highest chance of collision right now. As a matter of fact, it's actually currently orbiting around, what is this, Mars? Yep, there we go. Earth and Mars have created a dual planet. And so they currently have a very high chance of colliding with one another because they're relatively close and they're interacting with each other and they're going to attract each other and possibly cause a collision. Now, this hypothesis states that through these collisions, other terrestrial planets were actually made. So these collisions of these gas giants sometime in the past billions of years ago have then created um, leftovers that essentially created terrestrial planets. Now, we'll see if this happens. I actually want to see if this collision produces uh, terrestrial leftovers. And if it does happen, maybe, just maybe, this is actually how the planetesimals that created our planet Earth were actually born. So we're talking about like 4.5 to 5 billion years ago when the solar system was very, very young, when the planets were just being born. Now, no collisions yet. These four huge, huge uh, gas giants are still kind of just orbiting around one another, but I'm expecting something to happen very soon. And the first occurrence is that it seems that Venus is now, uh, because of the interaction with other planets, has lost a lot of its orbit and is approaching Sun really closely. At some point, it might actually collide with the Sun, but it will definitely start losing a lot of its uh, gases, a lot of its mass to uh, this really close approach with the Sun, and it will very likely lose so much mass that it will probably turn into a terrestrial planet again. So all of its gas will disappear, and it will become a terrestrial planet, also known as the Ctonic planet. It's a planet that's been burned by the sun and all of its gas uh, material has actually left. Um, we, we also have created a relatively stable dual planet between Mars and Earth, but I'm expecting a collision sometime soon, so I'm still waiting for it. And so this will be possibly the next event. And while I'm waiting for this uh, event to happen, notice how all of the other orbits are also changing. So everything is rearranging, everything is being reconstituted, and so the collision chance for uh, many other objects is actually relatively high as well. So let's accelerate time here a little bit, and we're going to see if any of the collisions create terrestrial objects. And to my surprise, even years later, the system actually hasn't changed that much. Well, actually, Mercury has increased its orbit just a little bit because of the interaction with Venus, but Venus is still there, uh, the Earth and Mars still have dual planets, and Jupiter and Saturn are still orbiting just fine. Now, it will obviously take a lot longer for us to experience some of these collisions, and the disappearance of Venus will actually take a lot longer as well. But um, let's wait maybe a few more years and find out what actually occurs in the solar system. As you can see, it's relatively stable. Um, so obviously, it's quite possible somewhere out there there is something like this, including... Um, uh, what would be known as a hot Jupiter, basically a gas giant that orbits really, really, really close to the parent star, which is what we have right here. This is our hot Jupiter, uh, Venus. The current temperature here is, um, oh, it's actually only 105 degrees. That's not, that's not that hot. It can definitely get a lot hotter. And uh, we also have a very interesting dual planet that was formed by Mars and Earth completely by accident without really any interference from me, and they orbit around each other really, really closely, actually. This is a lot closer than Moon is to Earth. This is only about maybe um, 100,000 or so kilometers. So the actual tidal effects on that these planets experience is really, really, really high. Okay, well, this is maybe the closest I've been to a collision between Mercury and Venus, so let's see what happens. Maybe they'll actually finally collide into each other, or maybe they'll also turn into dual planets. This is, uh, this is one of the closest approaches they've had so far. Okay, so nothing really happens. I think the orbit of Mercury has probably changed, but... Oh, okay then. So Mercury has now been kicked out of the solar system. Or at least it seems like it has. 
Maybe it will come back one day, but definitely not anytime soon. All right, so the collision between Mercury and um, Venus unfortunately did not occur, so we're going to have to rely on an artificial collision. Let's try to collide these two guys. We're going to go into the um, motion here, and we're going to change their parameters just a little bit and have them collide with one another. Now, maybe this is not as real as I wanted it to make, but I wanted to experience a collision between two massive gas giants, and is it still not going to happen? It's still not going to happen. Very interesting. All right, let's try this again. Let's wait for them to come really close together, and hopefully this time they will collide. They're being really stubborn. They're actually being very resilient. When I actually do want to make a, du a dual planet on purpose, it never works. When I don't need it, it just seems to happen. Anyway, okay. So the collision did create fragments. Unfortunately, none of them are terrestrial planets, except for these guys, look at that. Okay, let's wait a little bit. Let's see what happens to those fragments. Will they actually solidify or will they collide back with, that, with this planet? So the future of that gas giant is obviously unknown, but it might either um, escape the solar system and turn into a rogue planet or its own um, brown dwarf system, because it's technically now a brown dwarf, right? Yes, it's mass of 25 Jupiters, it's called Mars, and it's definitely its own sort of object. We'll, we'll come back to it in a second. Well, let's actually take a look at some of these fragments that might have survived here after this collision. So there's a few of them that I see, but I think most of them actually just disappeared because they were made out of gas as well. Um, so if, a, if the fragment is made out of gas, it's very likely going to be, get expelled out of the solar system because of the high solar radiation. But if that fragment was made out of essentially uh, rocky planets, rocky stuff, it would very likely stay in orbit and eventually turn into a planetesimal and then into a planet. This particular object by the name of Mars is definitely escaping the solar system. It's not going to come back. Um, Mercury is probably also escaping and Venus will at some point collide with the Sun. So all of these gas giants will disappear completely and will turn into nothing. I wasn't really successful with creating the um, terrestrial objects here, but I was successful with expelling all of the brown dwarfs from our solar system. I think, right? If I accelerate time now? Yep, they're all gone. Except for, of course, Venus that's still there but it's not going to be there for a very long time because with time, the sun will definitely absorb it. All right, so that's an interesting first experiment. I still wanna to try to create the terrestrial objects, but I'm going to try to do this more naturally next time in one of the future videos. So do come back tomorrow because you're going to learn something new, something else educational using video games. And also subscribe if you still haven't and possibly share this video with someone who enjoys watching these types of videos. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. Let's take a look at last uh, last look at this Mars that we've created. It's very dark now because there's basically no nothing here. It's no no radiation whatsoever. So it's a very dark brown dwarf, 25 masses of Jupiter. Very interesting and very possible that something like that like this actually does exist out there and was created in our solar system. Anyway, see you guys later. Space out and as always, bye bye.